citations and works cited pages. Let's start by looking at some of the basics of MLA citation. When to use quotes in your essay. Avoid quotes in your introduction and in the topic sentences for your body paragraphs. Um, when you're using quotes, they really should be introduced and then analyzed. Um, and that takes a fair amount of work. Some people suggest that using a quote as a hook is a good idea, but I'm not among them. Um, I tend to think that uh, a quote is not a great place for a hook. Um, anyway, um, also avoid them in the topic sentences for your body paragraphs. Remember, this is the paper that you are writing, not somebody else's paper, so make sure that you're beginning and ending with your own words and not somebody else's. After you've given the topic sentence and explained what your writing will be about um, in your paragraph, you can consider using a quote that proves or illustrates what you claimed in your topic sentence. Remember, a quote should never appear in a sentence by itself because there is no context for the quote. After the quote, show how it supports your point or idea. This will be in your own words and will demonstrate the connection between your idea and the quote you've used. It will explain the to the reader why you chose that quote um, and why it's relevant to your main point. The quote doesn't make your point for you. Instead, it helps um, support your claim. It helps you um, give evidence that other people agree with you that this point is true. And do not end a paragraph with a quote, again, because you need to add some analysis in there. And if you're ending on it, there's no room for that analysis. Let's look at the next slide. And kind of puts the same idea into other words. So you can think about this as um, a quote sandwich. Some people think it's a hamburger. Um, I think of it as a ham and cheese. But anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, the quote sandwich guidelines for quotations. To ensure your reader fully understands how the quote you're using supports your thesis, you must smoothly incorporate the quote into your paragraph. Otherwise, your reader may be left unsure of why you used it in the first place. So to avoid this, introduce it, then do your quotation citation, and then explain it. So introduce it is the bun, you got the meat of the quotation citation, and then the explain it. But introduce it. So before adding your quote, introduce it with a signal phrase or a marker verb. Um, the example here is this, the article explains that. Or you might say, um, in his essay, uh, Dr. Uh, Graf explains, or you could um, just flat out introduce the title of um, the article that you are about to quote um, and tell us the author. That's another really um, excellent way to introduce a quotation. After you've introduced it, that's when you bring your quotation in, followed by your citation. Um, after you've introduced your quote, then add it to your text. Here we've got the example um, showing that uh, the, the introduction, the author explains that is the introduction, the quotation Franklin's, for, Franklin's voracious capacity for knowledge, investigation, and finding practical solutions to problems. That's the quote. Um, Finished the sentence resulted in many inter in interventions that benefited early American communities. I think that's supposed to be inventions. Um, I will change that for next time. <laughs> anyway. Um, now that's bothering me, let's just inventions. There we go. Many inventions that benefited early American communities. And then you've got to explain it. So now you've got your quote. Um, explain why it's important. What do you think it means? Um, how does it explain your topic sentence and thesis? How does it, um, oh, my head's blocking this. Let's see, what does it say in my notes? Um, what your explanation uh, should be at least as long, oh, your explanation should be as long or at least as long as the quote that you used um, that you're explaining. So, and another thing, um, when you are writing a short paper, so something under 10 pages, you really want to limit the length of those quotes. Um, so don't use like paragraph long quotes um, on half of the pages. That's not 
um, what we're going for. If you're doing a much longer paper, um, a couple paragraph long quotes might be acceptable. Um, so keep that in mind when you are writing um, using quotes and using MLA format. How to punctuate titles. Now this is a, a point of confusion for a lot of students, so um, pay attention here. Um, put the names of articles, essays, poems, and chapters in quotation marks. So these are like small elements, uh, chapters, that many chapters comprise a book, or many poems comprise a collection, many songs comprise an album, etc. Um, so those smaller pieces, those essays, poems, articles, etc., those should be in quotation marks. Okay, so here are some examples. Um, dialect mountains as islands, the farmer revolutionary introduction. These are all titles of poems or essays or chapters. Um, now for those larger works, for those books, those movies, magazines, newspapers, other periodicals and albums, you are going to need to italicize those. So they got to be at that slant. Okay, so some examples would be the San Francisco Chronicle, right? That's a newspaper. Um, the Great Gatsby, that's a novel, The White Album, that's from the Beatles album, and Huckleberry Finn, Mark Twain, novel. Um, all would be italicized, so make sure to do that. This is the same as in APA format as well. Okay, so in-text citations are really important in all formats. Um, this is how you attribute um, credit to other sources and other authors. And they usually come directly after the quote that they reference. In MLA style, referring to the works of others in your text is done by using what is known as parenthetical citation or in-text citation. This method involves placing relevant source information in parentheses after a quote or a paraphrase. <clears throat> so how do you introduce the author? The first time you use a quote from an article, you need to use the author's first and last name. And then any time after that that you mention this author, you can simply use the last name. So if you are introducing an article written by me, you would introduce me as Casey Cameron first. And then any time after that you mention my name, you would just call me Cameron. So MLA format follows the author page method of in-text citation. This means that the author's last name and the page number or page numbers from which the quotation or paraphrase is taken must appear in the text. Um, a complete reference should appear also in your work cited page at the end of the document. The author's name may appear either in the sentence itself or in parentheses following the quotation or paraphrase, but the page numbers should always appear in the parentheses, not in the text of your sentence. Um, and we'll look at the examples here. So here you see that the author is introduced in the sentence. So Wordsworth stated that romantic poetry was marked by a spontaneously, spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings parentheses, and in the parentheses you have the page number, okay? You don't need to put P or PG or anything like that, um, just the number. So as I said before, his, the author's name here, Wordsworth, is mentioned in the sentence. So that's important because when you have a very similar sentence here, um, Romantic poetry is characterized by the spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings. You notice that the author is not mentioned in the sentence itself, and because of that, it is mentioned in the in-text citation at the end. Wordsworth 263. The same exact information as the, uh, the quotation above, it's just presented in a bit of a different way. So you can do either of these. This is totally fine. Notice in the second one, there's no punctuation between the two. It's not Wordsworth comma 263 or Wordsworth comma P263. It's just um, author page number. That's the format. If you want to paraphrase um, that same idea, 
you could um, do something like this last example. Wordsworth extensively explored the role of emotion in the creative process, 263. So again, you'll see that the elements that are required for your citation, the last name of the author and the page number, and the same information that we had in these other two sentences, again, just presented in a slightly different way. Both citations in the examples 263 and words with 263 each tell readers that the information in the sentence can be located on page 263 of that particular work by an author named Wordsworth. If readers want more information about the source, they can turn to the work cited page, which is the last page of the document, where under the name of Wordsworth, they would find the following information. They would find the... If you saw one of these um, sentences in a paper you were reading and thought, I'd really like to know more about Best and Marcus. I'm curious about what their paper is titled. So you'd flip to the end of the paper, the works cited list, and the entry, there would be an entry on the page and it would read, Best David and Sharon Marcus. There are three authors. It's not in fact just two. Um, then the title, surface reading and introduction. So Representations Volume 108, Number 1, Fall 209 is the periodical. It's probably a, um, a journal, academic journal that it's, it's um, published in. And then PP1 to 21, that's the, how many pages it, pages it is. Those are the pages um, where it's located in that particular publication as well. And then um, it was uh, found in a database, the JSTOR database in this case. And then they've included the DOI, which is also, um, this is a permanent URL, so to speak, um, or a URL um, would be necessary here, or you would expect to find here. Yeah, so both of these are using a URL, and they're the last thing. They come at the very end, um, and it's just so that readers who want to find more information or find these sources can go back to those um, after having read your essay. Another thing you'll need to do is make sure you're beginning your works cited page on a separate separate sheet at the end of your paper. It should have the same one inch margins, um, same uh, heading, um, the page number, header as the rest of your paper. So it should be last name and then the page number. Uh, you can insert page numbers in whatever works cited, sorry, work proce word processor program that you use. Um, usually on the insert tab. Um, yeah, so it needs to have that same last name, page number. Um, label the page work cited. Um, it's got to be the title. It's going to be center of the page. And don't italicize the words. Don't put them in quotation marks. Don't make them bold. Just plain text work cited. Capitalize works, capitalize cited and center them at the top of the page. Make sure to double space all citations, but don't skip spaces between entries. So don't double uh, return, just one return, carriage return, and that will um, be where you start your next essay. Sorry, entry. We're gonna look at an example of this on the next slide. So um, keep that in mind. Indent the second and subsequent lines of citations by half an inch. This is called a hanging indent, and I have a video, a very quick video, on how to do that in Word and in Google Docs um, on our Readings and Resources page in the Videos folder. So check that out if you don't know what that is. Um, I will mark you off if you aren't doing it, so please uh, look it up. Alphabet blah, wow. Alphabetize work cited by author's last name. Um, if there is no author for that particular article, alphabetize by article title, okay? So now let's look at the last slide, and this is going to be what a works cited page looks like, and I'll just try and break it down for you guys a little bit. Um, so this first citation here, this um, is author, 
Okay, you can see they're all they all start with author, 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 author. This one, this is a movie. This is not does not have an author, so it starts with its title straight up. Uh, author, author, author. This triple dash indicates that Nordhaus William D also wrote this particular article. So he wrote two articles in this person's that this person is referencing. So instead um, of writing Nordhaus William D again, this triple dash indicates that hey, the guy above this also wrote this paper. Author's name, author's name. Doesn't seem to be multiple authors represented here. Um, this looks like a popular news article, came from the New York Times, um, gives you the date of publication, the date that that particular article was run, and um, it shows you the um, URL. Now this page, I don't know why the this, uh, this presentation didn't mention this before, but I'm going to mention it now. Um, also, you should accompany your URL by an accessed date. So this tells people that maybe you would read your article a year or two from when it was written, um, that if that particular source is no longer available, it would show when the source was accessed, um, when you accessed it, and when it was available. Um, it's just something we do in MLA format. So try and remember uh, try and remember when you accessed the particular um, internet resource and include that access date as approximately as you can um, to it to complete your citation. All right, so that comes that brings us to the end of this particular MLA uh, format lecture. I hope you found it helpful and um, if you need to reach out, please, visit the Writing Center at UAF or at CTC. They are really excellent student resources for Works Cited pages and for learning how to properly incorporate quotations and in-text citation. Um, if after you've visited the tutors you still have some questions, please reach out to me. You can always get me at ccameron5 at alaska.edu. All right, take care.